Hey guys, it's Doc. Today we're going to talk about different color blades of grass and what they mean. I have red tips on my grass. I have yellow blades. We're going to cover different things. So hold on one sec. Wonder what this is going to be. We got a surprise. We got a surprise. Hey guys, so it's uh, about nine o'clock in the morning. Still have a lot of dew on the grass, but you can see it looks pretty good. My grass got a really early start because of our jump start program this year. Again, Bermuda, short, we're keeping it at about half an inch back here. But today I wanted to talk about an issue that um, a lot of people ask a question about that I have to deal with too. And that is a lot of times you'll see red tips, especially on your Bermuda grass, you'll see the tips of them get red or purple almost and also yellow blades which is chlorosis a lot of yellow blades popping up so in the bermuda lawn guide which is free by the way there's a way to read that guide subject by subject so when you go to that website and in the description below i'm going to link to everything i'm talking about so in the description click there go take you to our website and i'll have a link to the bermuda lawn guide and there's a way to read that where it's subject by subject and there's a place on there about different color blades of grass and what it means and how to treat it. So today what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna take you right now and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some red tips on my lawn. So let me show you that video first. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can get this zoomed in for you here. Let me get my finger next to it so you can see it better. All right, see those red tips? That's what I'm talking about right there. That is typically because of low phosphorus. Sometimes it's late cold season weather stress. But I guarantee in my yard that's going to be probably, probably low phosphorus. And you really can't see it from far away. So let's first let's talk about red purple tips. Red purple tips usually happen in this time of year in the spring. And usually it's from cold stress. In other words, you get some cold fronts coming through. You know, you got 80 degree high, it's nice and beautiful, and then you get a couple days where it drops down to like 43 at night. That can, that can cause that red tip. The other thing that'll cause it is a phosphorus deficiency. So those are the two things that typically cause the red tips on lawns. Now, earlier in the year, we had a soil test on and all these lawns test low on phosphorus. I don't know why, just our area. So we came out and we did our soil correction and we used a fertilizer that was a little bit higher in phosphorus to do our soil correction. And then we went back to PGF Complete. And PGF Complete is what you should be using, especially without a soil test. It's a 4-1-2 ratio. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm seeing some red tips and it's not bad, I can't see them. In other words, if I'm standing here, I don't see red, I don't have a red lawn. I don't, but every so often I see some red tips and it's not an issue. I just wanna make sure that my soil correction did its job. So what am I doing? We get ready to do a second soil test. It's not a bad idea if you had a real issue with your soil correction that you need to do, about six weeks later, it's not a bad idea to do another soil test. Um, now I use Clemson University this year. And the reason why I'm using Clemson <laughs> is because <laughs> it's because it's real easy. I don't know if you can see that or not. But basically, you can put all your soil tests on one page and send in one check and it's done pretty quickly. Now, I don't know with all the lockdown how quickly they're processing this stuff, but I would used them and I was really happy with it. They email you the results and they also have a CEC test that's included at the $6. So it cost me $6 per test. But the CEC is the um, caddy and exchange capability of your lawn, which is something that I wanted to measure and watch this year. So uh, I'm gonna do another round of soil testing. So let's talk yellow tips for a minute. Yellow, or excuse me, yellow blades. Yellow blades typically is chlorosis. Most people will say that it's a lack of iron in your lawn, but it can be a few different things. Uh, yellow tips can be very high phosphorus, 
which sort of creates a lockup of the iron inside of your soil. So a lot of people, like a lot of people that use malorganite um, will have a real high phosphorus spike and it, they get a lot of chlorosis. As a matter of fact, that's why um, they put a lot of iron inside of their inside of their fertilizer to sort of combat that high phosphorus. I don't like to use high phosphorus. You're supposed to use a 4-1-2 ratio. That's what you're supposed to use on a lawn. So you might have a high phosphorus and that's where a soil test comes in. The other thing that'll cause it is overwatering or just constant watering. So you get a heavy saturation of the soils that can cause a chlorosis. The other thing is also compaction issues. Um, so if you have a compaction, compaction issue, but it's kind of hard to actually determine it. So those are the things, red tips and yellow tips. Again, the Bermuda Long Guide covers it. So today I'm just gonna go ahead um, and I'm gonna do some more soil testing. What I like to do, just to be safe, what I do, I don't take one soil test. So I have my front left, front right. I have my back left and my back right. That's how I code them. And then I'm gonna actually do my gardens, my vegetable gardens too. I figured while I'm sending it in, let me just send it in. Um, and then you put one check, costs six bucks a test and you get all your results back. So it's a good time to do it. Now I use a soil probe and I go randomly and I'll hit my lock in my yard and pull my soil samples. Uh, and I'll do this side is my back. I always do it where I'm facing my house. So whether I'm out front or I'm out back. So this is my back left. That's my back right. And when I go out front, I face my house and that's my back. That's my front right and front left. So I take those two different zones and test it that way. Hey guys, so I figured I'd cut in and walk you through my soil testing real quick. I'm gonna put a link to these bags and I'm gonna put a link to this probe. Description below, there's a link. It'll take you over to a web page. And on that web page, I always list everything I'm talking about. Last time I linked to these bags, I had the tan ones up. <laughs> guess what? <laughs> I guess everyone went and bought them because they're sold out. So I had to order black ones. That's a, that's a silver Sharpie, by the way. Uh, I always say this, when I ordered this probe, I didn't think I'd use it a lot, but let me tell you what. I'm constantly pulling this thing out and using this. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go. So this is my back left over here. I'm just going to go here, 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 and here. I want about half to three quarters of a cup. And I'm going to show you the portion that I'm pulling. So hold on one second. So the problem with my lawn that most people have is, is you put your probe down in and you hit construction debris. God, there's some, I'm sure that there are some dead people buried under this lawn at some point. But let me just show you real quick. So this is my actual probe. And this is my grass. Then I have a thatch layer. And then I have my darker layer where human char is starting to work in finally. And what I'm looking for is I want to go just below that dark layer right there. This is the two inches, two to three inches that I want to test, which is the main root zone. That's where I want to pull. I want to pull out of my rain main root zone. And it's hard for, for material to get down there. So I just push it up like this. And what I do is I just tap it. And there's my red clay soil. And that's what I'm gonna put in here. And what I've learned to do is just put that soil in there and then leave the bag open for a day or two and just let them dry out. Good Lord, man. There's so much crap under this lawn. So again, that's mine. And I want to take from just below that to about here. That's where I want to test. All right, so if you hadn't, if you didn't watch this video, the garden video, how we made this amazing soil, watch that. Because <laughs> all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go right about where my plants are. I'm going to pull a sample out of here. 
This is the front G1 sample. It's G1. All right, so all those soil samples are done now. Uh, I thought of something. I'm using these black bags. So I figured out why not accelerate the drying process real quick and use the use the sunlight because I want to get them off tomorrow. I just spread them out, put them on their side, let them sit out here in the sun for half a day, and they should be dry. So let me show you what I'm so excited about. We got big, beautiful aerator pegs. Oh, so there she is. The new aerator just shipped in and uh, I'll be doing a video on this next week and it's really cool and what I did was I just aerated this and then I used the lawn sweeper the lawn sweepers down there to pick up all my plugs and you can see I've got nicely plugged out holes nicely plugged out holes and no plugs on my lawn to cover up my Bermuda. You're supposed to return your plugs. <laughs> you go right ahead and return them. They created a mess on short Bermuda. Golf courses never leave plugs on the ground. Never. <laughs> and that's the same rule we follow here too. So what's pretty cool, now this area is recovering in here, but this area um, has been aerated and swept with my lawn sweeper. No plugs and open holes. And the cool thing about this aerator is, is I can switch out the tines. So I can do core aeration or I can do tine aeration, solid tine. I'll be doing videos on both of those. Oof. So, it's actually at the end of the day, <laughs> Jacob came over, uh, we cut the back, I showed him the aerator, we're going to be shooting some aerator videos. And then after we aerate, we're going to be putting down humid char and we're going to be putting down organic matter. So we got a lot of videos. Hit that subscribe button. Um, the red tip is usually not an issue, but it is a good signal. Like I said, if you had a cold front come through, it's probably the cold. But you might want to do get another soil test or get a soil test to see if it's low phosphorus. And if so, I'll put a link to in the description on that page a higher phosphorus granule you can put out. It's hard to find right now, by the way. I found one on Amazon and I ordered it. I'll put a little bit out. So let's talk about real quick about the yellowing chlorosis. Uh, iron deficiency is typically what it is, so you can spray it. The other thing you can do is you can aerate, you can moderate your watering schedule, make sure the ground is getting dry in wet periods, dry in wet periods. Um, it may be a balance in your pH. Um, it may be alkalinity in your pH, so in other words, as your pH moves up and down, different chemicals like iron is not available to it. So that may be an issue to it. So you need to check your pH. There's a bunch of stuff. And we cover that in the Bermuda Lawn Guide. So anyways, guys, um, a lot of work to do. I'll talk to you later.